My wife has a horrible habit that I discovered two months ago. We were ordering lunch on the Subway app, and I told her to pick the location that has a drive that way we don't have to go inside and take the baby out of the car just to clip him back in a few minutes later. She told me it's not a big deal to leave the baby in the car to run in and pick it up really fast. I had no idea she ever did this. I told her I was not comfortable with her leaving him in the car alone even for a minute, and she told me she's been doing it since he was born, and it's always been fine. She told me she does it to pick up food, run into the post office or pharmacy, etc. I was floored. We don't live in a horrible area, but it's also not super safe either. I told her to not ever do this again. She told me she never stopped to think about the potential dangers and that she would stop doing it. Well, yesterday as I was driving home from my brother's house, I spotted her car at the gas station near our place. It was parked in a spot up front and not a pump, so I figured she stopped in to grab some snacks which we like to do. I decided to stop and go in and say hi and get some food, and I pulled in and parked next to her. However, when I got there I was furious to find our son in his car seat. The car wasn't even locked. I don't know what came over me, but at that moment I decided to take my son and put him into my car, he's got a car seat in there too. I then drove to the other side of the gas station parking lot and waited for my wife to come out. It took six minutes for her to appear. When she saw that he was gone she looked stunned for a second and then started to frantically look around and cry. I didn't let it go on long, after this I saw her pull her phone out, presumably to call 911, and that's when I pulled my car around to her. I parked, got out and walked around to my son's door and opened it to show him to her. She looked extremely relieved, but that quickly turned to anger with her asking me why I took him and did that to her. I told her she needed to learn her lesson, and she promised to stop leaving him in the car and that she was extremely irresponsible. It was so easy for me to pull up and take him. No one else at the gas station even noticed. So if he really was taken there would have been no help and it would have been 100% her fault. She proceeded to call me cruel and psychotic and tried taking our son out of my car into hers. I said no and that I would be driving him home and I left. She came home not much later but ignored me the rest of the day. She acknowledged me today saying she wanted an apology and I said absolutely not and she's the one who should be saying sorry. She's been guilt tripping me the rest of the day saying no mother should experience the fear I put her through. Did I go too far? Am I the idiot? Normally I'm fully against game playing, but this is your child's life. I support your actions. Your wife is being hugely neglectful. Not to mention it'll be warm soon and being left in a hot car even for a few minutes can be deadly. Not the idiot and I wouldn't let her take him anywhere until she apologizes. Honestly, not the idiot in my view. She leaves your son unattended in an unlocked car. Not only can he get kidnapped, but five minutes during a hot summer day can be enough for a heat stroke. Or someone stealing the car, not realizing a kid is on board. Or a million other risks or dangers. You ask her not to do it again. She agreed and still did it again. I wouldn't leave my kid with her to run an errand again. Not the idiot but I have to say. What would happen if your wife forgets or she takes longer, have you read about babies sitting in hot cars and what can happen? Being kidnapped is only one of the many awful outcomes. My husband is from the south and let me just say this, he hates vegans. His family is a stereotypical country one, and they get ridiculously mad when they see Beyond Meat etc. adverts on the TV. They're practically vegan phobic and hate any menu which says suitable for vegetarians or vegans etc. This never really bothered me, and I thought it was funny because I ate meat and I didn't think it was a big deal. My daughter, now 6, was born allergic to a lot of things, like eggs, and is also intolerant to lactose and grass, pollen, etc. She rarely got to go to birthday parties because we couldn't let her eat anything there. When she was a baby my husband ate an egg sandwich and kissed her, and she broke out in hives, and we had to take her to the doctor. All new foods were tried under medical supervision. While she can eat meat she can't eat any fun meat like nuggets because of egg contact. One of the kids she recently met with is our new neighbor who is around four houses away. They are completely vegan, and their son doesn't eat anything they don't. So, on his birthday, she could eat the actual cake and not a muffin I'd sent. It cheered her up, and they had play dates even when we weren't supposed to. I was glad she made a friend. His parents hadn't called for a while and didn't pick up ours. 
When I saw his dad while I was out I was like hey what's wrong and he was really hostile, telling me to never talk to him or his wife again and that he'd pray for my daughter. I thought that was crossing the line. He pulled his phone out and showed me a very rude text from my husband. I didn't believe his story that my husband started a fight, but when I asked him about it, he was proud that Shelia wasn't hanging out with hippies. I remembered the vegan hate and I was like until he apologized to that family and they agreed to let their kid play with ours, I'd never cook meat again. He said I needed to get over it and do my job, but I am cooking, just not what he would like. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. A spouse telling me to do your job in reference to a household chore would put me right on strike. I wouldn't stop cooking meat for the guy, I'd stop cooking for him. He sounds like an objectively horrible person to be so callous toward your daughter's friendship and so proud of picking a fight and insulting others. Of course, the fact that you thought this kind of hatred was just sort of funny until it impacted your child makes me wonder a little about you. Not the idiot, but I almost want to call you the idiot for staying with someone so nasty. Your husband literally ruined your daughter's one friendship over something insanely petty, and your only way of dealing with that is not cooking him meat. That sounds like an insane underreaction to me. Everyone is the idiot here because it's pretty clear OP doesn't actually care much to correct deal with, poor word choice on correct, her husband's behavior and defends him at every turn. Everyone is the idiot here except the vegan family and your daughter. I've read your comments and you make so many excuses for your husband. You excused his hate for vegans and his behavior until it personally impacted you. I wonder what else you excuse because it hasn't personally impacted you. Your husband is an idiot for obvious reasons. Update. I will try to find couples counseling, although I don't think he'll agree to it. I hope Ina forgives me, vegan mom, since this blew up, I'm really very sorry and I won't bother you again. Thank you all for your responses. I, 25M, am having a clash of morals and obligations and would like an outside perspective. When I was 13 my parents died and I was raised by my paternal grandparents. It was the easiest choice since they lived in the same area when my parents were alive and visited them frequently. I am my grandparents' only grandchild as my aunt, 43F, is child-free, so when they passed on they left me their house. The current total value of the house is around $500,000, and that's lowballing the estimate, and it's fully paid off, so I basically have a really good head start in life, although I could never imagine selling it. Recently, I was approached by a man. 38M, John, claiming to be my grandfather's son and would like a DNA test to verify it. I was shocked and didn't believe him and told him to go out because that would mean that my grandfather cheated on my grandmother. He also contacted my aunt and she recognized him as the neighbor's kid who moved away years ago. Apparently, my grandparents were friends with his parents, but then one day there was a huge fight and the couple moved away. John stated that his mom had an affair with my grandfather and when the husband found out he divorced his mom and they were forced to sell the house. John said that his mom's husband wanted nothing to do with him since he wasn't sure if he was the father and abandoned him. Years later John tracked him down and after a DNA test confirmed that he wasn't the father, John's mom confessed that the only other possible candidate was my grandfather. John's mom insisted her ex was the father for years. My aunt lives in another country, so John has been asking me to do a DNA test so that he can finally know for sure who his father is. I was willing to do it until my girlfriend, 26F, brought up the issue of ownership of the house. I did a quick check and if the DNA test proves that John is indeed my grandfather's son, he might be able to sue for a share of the estate. If it came down to it, I would be forced to sell my home because there's no way I could buy out even one third of the share if John wanted it. I contacted John and said that I would be more than willing to do a DNA test, but only under the condition that he sign away any rights or claims to the house if he's proven to be my grandfather's son via paperwork that my lawyers will draw up. I didn't hear from John for days, but then got an angry call from a woman claiming to be his wife who called me greedy and selfish. That I couldn't possibly know the pain of not knowing who my father is and that my grandfather owes John. I hung up on her and contacted a lawyer so far unless John can present enough evidence to create doubt he doesn't have much of a case, especially since the possible father is already deceased. 
Well, I'm content with never giving John what he wants until he waives his rights, and my aunt won't either, his wife has begun stalking me on social media and putting me on blast. Am I the idiot? P.S. Just in case this wasn't clear and to give more info. 1. My aunt is aware of everything and supports what I'm doing. 2. My grandparents' will was very clear once they both passed I get the house, my aunt got their life insurance policy, we split the remainder of their savings, and sentimental items were to be given to the designated people. There was no mention of giving anything for a possible secret long-lost child. 3. My grandparents were cremated so John wouldn't be able to even request that my grandfather be dug up for a test. Although, my aunt and I haven't told him that. 4. I did initially block his wife, but she created other accounts. 5. I'm an American and live in the USA. Not the idiot. The wife and John are definitely going to sue for the estate. The fact that he didn't agree to draw up papers to ensure that doesn't happen is suspicious. If he really just wanted to know who his biological father is, he would have agreed, you both would have taken the test, you guys would get the results, and that would have been the end of it. It's suspicious that he didn't opt to do that. You were right in getting that lawyer. Not the idiot. The next request is for your attorney to send the harassing wife a cease and desist, or she will be sued for harassment. Not the idiot. Do what you've got to do to protect your assets. Not the idiot. Hot meat kettle, they can't call you greedy and say he only wants to know who his father was if they won't sign something, saying he won't contest the will. He wants to know, but he wants the money too. But if your grandfather did cheat and his mistress got pregnant, he had to have known there was a possibility of him having another kid out there, but he still left the house to you. So, I have a really sweet mill, DH's mom, and we get along most of the time. However, when she visits our home I notice that she goes through my drawers in the bedroom looking for a charger or something. I find it a bit invasive and embarrassing, especially when she opens the wrong drawer that would have personal items in it like lingerie, and then goes on to complain about how uncomfortable it is for her every single time. We've gone back and forth on this, and when I stated that she was wrong for even looking at personal stuff, she said she got confused and didn't know what drawer had the item she looked for. DH suggested I should just bring her whatever she needs, instead of having to go inside and look herself, but she never asks. So I decided to label my drawers, meaning I put a sign on every drawer to eliminate Dear Mill's confusion. For example, I put a sock sign on the sock drawer, then a lingerie sign on the lingerie and underwear drawer, electronics, makeup drawer, etc. Do you get the idea? The next time Mill visited she walked into the bedroom looking for something while I was in the kitchen cooking. Minutes later she came in with my husband asking about the signs I had on each drawer. I told her I just labeled each drawer to end her confusion and help her find what she was looking for quickly. She looked offended and said that she was neither a small child nor stupid to be treated like this. I said I was really trying to help and also try to prevent her from seeing stuff that upset her in the past. She got madder and kept arguing, then left to stay at my Bill's house. Bill called and berated both DH and me, and then DH lashed out saying I caused this mess and I needed to apologize. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. She feigned confusion to excuse her snooping. You believed and accommodated her. She's mad you believed her lies and took her excuse away. Not the idiot, and you're kind of my hero. The signs essentially eliminated her excuse to snoop, and now she's salty about it. Hopefully, your husband gets his head out of his backside and realizes that his mother is literally offended over you labeling your own drawers. If she didn't want to be able to snoop, why would that bother her? This is next level gaslighting. So, this woman has zero boundaries and rummages through your personal items on the regular. Then gets upset when she sees something that should actually be there. Then she overreacts and gets offended when you treat her like a child, even though she has behaved like one on numerous occasions in your house. She follows that up with this chaser. Let's talk smack about OP and get everyone pissed off at her. There is no way you are the idiot, but that doesn't really cover it adequately, there really is so much wrong with this. I think you might need a reality check. This family is sick. Not the idiot.